What's up guys, CV here, breaking down another crit video for you guys. This is a Cat 2-3. Saw my little trailer I put together, tried to make like a little movie trailer there. Hope you guys like that. If you haven't, uh, it's the video previous to this one. Uh, go check it out. Pause this video, go check it out. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, if you guys are just finding the channel for the first time, please subscribe. And uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for clicking on the video. I uh, hope you like the content I bring all about road cycling, crit racing. Um, my advice as a, uh, this is my third year racing bicycles. Um, I'd like to say it's my second year now, kind of knowing that the first year you're racing bicycles is just really like, you, you learn some stuff, but getting those 10 races as a cat five is more just like, um, you know, learning how to crit race, like in a sense of like, how to turn your bicycle, how to work, how to be in a group, how to be comfortable in a group. Um, I'll link the video right now up in the top right corner of my breakdown of the Cat 5 race I won and a beginner's guide a little bit to, to crit racing. This is kind of my thoughts, second year now, I'm a Cat 3, uh, excuse me, third year now, I'm a Cat 3, my second year as a Cat 3. Uh, I skipped the fours just by winning some four or five races as a five, and that gave me the points to get to three anyway. So I'm in these two, three races now. Um, I'm recording this after the second weekend of racing in 2019. So I've actually raced the second Avondale going the other direction, which is the same course we're on now going the other direction. Uh, yeah, so I have a different outlook and this year we have a different approach to racing we have more people on our team we've recruited a bunch of people by we i mean i recruited people and basically the two three race um we have in my opinion the fastest guy in arizona fastest which means sprint wise speed wise johnny corcoran on our team now so the idea here with 10 of us is to keep the race together and we have enough guys that like I can sit in and be kind of with Johnny on the last lap and uh, do what needs to be done. And also try to go for like a one, two, because um, we have enough people that, we, that I can just do that, that I don't have to be up on the front. I'm kind of around to make sure that no brakes um, get away. If something looks really good, I'm gonna go after it. Uh, and Johnny's just 100% sitting in. Now that's good and bad, right? Like we have the ability to keep it together and you know, we're going to make it a sprint. We're going to make it a bunch sprint. So that changes everything. Like you watch um, Jeff's videos, NorCal Cycling, like he, in those practice crits I've been watching lately, like there's not a big team that's just bringing breaks back. It's just, they're just constantly firing little shots and it's just break after break after break after break after break. And you're just going for it because you know one of them is going to stick. Here, you know, People are trying brakes, but we have so much power just dieseling on the front that we'll just eventually reel back in a two-man group. So it changes the dynamic for sure, but it does for everybody else. It does for, you know, everybody that has a good sprint. Um, like there's a big guy here that wins. If you guys saw that trailer, you know, you should, you know, I just, like I talked about, he wins the race. I mean, he's just 200, you know, 10 pounds of, of, of muscle and the dude can sprint and knowing like he goes in the race knowing that we're going to keep it together um you know he's just sitting in basically with with johnny i mean doing the same thing any sprinter's gonna do just sit and conserve and uh and, and try and have the freshest legs for the last you know uh 200 meters so and, and there's other sprinters too the pink jersey sprinter is going to be back there um and, and everybody else who thinks they have a shot at a sprint. So it becomes a little bit different of a race. Like people still take some shots here. You see, this is, this is uh, the week, first weekend, first race as a big team. So people don't realize the, the power we have to bring stuff back. So people are trying. Second weekend, like I said, it just happened. Um, you'd be surprised like nobody, I mean, it, it was such a slow race because everybody knew we were just gonna bring it back. Yeah, we just basically roll around. I think I go after one little move here just to keep that from go getting away. And then I sit in um, and we'll break down the sprint at the end of this video here. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. 
While we are just rolling around here, waiting for a bunch sprint uh, and, and letting the boys do some work on the front, um, let me talk about just real briefly the difference, or, or rather not the difference, but what I've learned is the most important thing for crit racing. And this is gonna be a real simple idea, but it's now right in front of me and it's black and white. So once you've ridden your bike for say like four years pretty hard, you've, got, you've been doing sprints and intervals and you just, you know, you're going up hills and all this stuff, you've built some muscle, you have some, um, you have some endurance muscle, you have some fast twitch, your legs look like a cyclist now, you, you can see some definition in your quads, you built those muscles up, right? Okay, you're ready. Or you're a two or you're a three, right? So what's the difference between you know, like I got third, I got a pretty definitive third here, and then the guys behind me and the guys in front of me. What's the difference? And I can, I can, I can plainly tell you what the difference is now, and it's how much you actually ride your bike. So once you get to the level uh, of, you know, you've been riding three, four, five years, six years, Maybe you're stuck in a rut at like a cat three or cat two and you're trying to get points as a two or something. And you're like, man, I just keep getting like fifths and sixths and like mid pack finishes. Like what's the difference? You know, how do I get to that next level? You know, and, and if you're at that point, a coach is probably gonna be helpful. But I, what it really comes down to is if you're not working, and I'm gonna say working because I don't wanna say just riding your bike. So there's things you can do off the bike, stretching, strengthening, uh, gym work. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you could be doing. So if you're not working, right, at this very moment, which you're not because you're watching this video, somebody else right now, somebody else you're gonna race is working. And then when you go, when you go out and you find that somebody, they're gonna beat you. And it literally comes down to how much time and how much devotion you have to this discipline that's it that's the difference and we can split hairs and we can talk about genetics and fast twitch and all this stuff and that's fun to talk about um, but ultimately nobody in the two three race is at their genetic potential right no one is no one is so trained that the difference between two people is just genetics no one is that far trained. Like you have to be trained so deep into like Sagan versus Froome, then you see the difference in genetics, you know, the genetic potential there. Because they're they've trained so deep. Here, if one guy can just train more than another, he's gonna be a better sprinter than him. If one guy can just work more than another, he's gonna be a better quote unquote sprinter. He's gonna out sprint the guy. Does that mean he's a better sprinter genetically? It doesn't matter because he's just literally put in more work on his bicycle put in more work off the bicycle, that's it. He's gonna just beat you, whether you have fast twitch or not, or whatever you wanna say. Um, that's what I've learned. That's, that's what I've learned, guys. So my advice to somebody right now who's a three, who wants to become a two, or who's a four who wants to become a three, and can't really put together like, what, what do I need to be doing, you know? Do I need to be doing like sprint intervals? Do I need to be, doing this, do I need a coach, do I need to be in zone two more? You know, what is it? And I'm, I'm just gonna say, it's time devoted as an overall encompassing like picture. Like if you could quit your job and just ride your bicycle, the same amount of hours you, you know, were working, let me not 40, but like if you could ride your bicycle 20 hours a week, like Brandon McNulty, I watch him, I follow him on Strava, he's a local kid. Uh, then guess what? The next time you go to your Cat 3 race, if you've been riding 20 hours a week, right? Can, assuming they're not just like coffee shop miles, you are gonna do better than you have been doing at riding, let's say you ride seven, eight hours a week. Like it's it's just simple. And then if you could put some rides in there that, that makes sense, like you could put some sweet spot, training, some tempo training, like, you know, just, you guys can do enough research. You know, there's enough channels out there that kind of give you some ideas on where to be. 
you know, calculate your own FTP, find a zone to sit in, make it hard, do some intervals, ride 20 plus hours a week, guess what? The next time you come to a Cat 3 sprint, you're gonna be so much more fresh than the, the guy you thought was a sprinter. You will literally just go by that guy. Like you will just go by him. Or you're gonna come to a Cat 3 and you're just gonna be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in this break. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna literally create a breakaway. And you're gonna just <clears throat> have the fitness to come out of the group, go up to somebody or take someone with you and just start rotating and then just leave, you know? It's a, uh, that's what I've really learned and um, I can say that I don't ride my bike enough. You know, like I just don't. I wish I could. Um, I'm gonna give you guys an idea here and my straw is in the description below. You can see what I do on a weekly basis. I try to do 150 miles a week. You know, that that's literally what I try to do. Um, so last week I did 106 miles. I did four hours on the bike. That was from January 21st to 27th. Uh, 14th to the 20th, I did 133 miles. Uh, 7th to the 13th, I did 158 miles. Um, that was actually an eight hour week. And the week before that, 31st to the 6th, I did only 37 miles on the bike. That was when it was in the 20s and I was riding on the, on the trainer and just doing like 45 minute efforts. Um, <clears throat> and I only did a couple of them. And, it, and then the week before that, three hours. Week before that, six hours, seven hours. You get the drift. Uh, the Strava is in the description uh, below if you wanna go see what I do. I post it all, including my power numbers. Um, and you can see what I've done. And I feel pretty good about the time I've spent on the bike versus my results. You know, I think I, I'd like to give myself a little credit. I don't wanna say that I've just been lazy, but give myself a little credit that I'm, I'm pretty sneaky. I'm pretty good at like surfing around, conserving energy. You know, that's the name of the game here, no matter what your fitness is, right? Even if you're riding 20 hours a week, um, it, it, and you know that it's gonna be a sprint like this, you wanna conserve energy and you wanna sneak around and then the last lap, you wanna have your nose in the right areas and we'll break down the sprint here coming up. Um, I'll do some slow-mo and I'll kind of tell you what I did right and wrong. Uh, in retrospect, what I would have done differently. Uh, it's always much easier to look at tape in slow motion and go, that's where I should have gone. And then uh, when it's happening in uh, you know the blink of an eye, you have to make a decision. Um, and that I can maybe give you some more insight into as well. That's something that you can't just, uh, you can't go out and ride your bike 20 hours a week and expect to learn that stuff. You have to put yourself in that position too. So you have to race your bike. You have to get the experience of the last laps to learn from and then to take that forward as well. So don't just think like, oh, I just ride my bike 20 hours a week, have all this crazy amount of fitness. And you come to the last lap, you have no idea how to be and, and no idea where to be, you know, you gotta, you gotta have that experience as well. So, <clears throat> um, I would like I, I like to think that that is something I'm decent at at this point. I'm still learning. Like we raced yesterday, and I made a bunch of mistakes still. But every time you race, it definitely gets better. It definitely gets better. You have to go out and put yourself in the. Uh, you have to go out and put yourself in the race to gain that experience. There's nothing that watching this video is really gonna gain you, know, gain you uh, or, or you're gonna gain something from this video. Like I learned stuff from watching videos, but getting the field experience is the most valuable thing. I mean, period. You gotta go out and do it. Um, coming up on five laps to go here. I think when we cross the line next, we'll have five to go. Cause that's about when I start letting Johnny in and I start trying to protect his wheel. Um, so that was my thought guys, I, I, as we come into the sprint here, I'm going to switch directions and I'm going to talk about what I did right and wrong in the sprint, but I just want to give you my thoughts, devote more time if you can to riding your bike. And then if, if you're just constantly getting beat, you know, it's, it's simply because somebody else is devoting more time. Somebody else doesn't have uh, a full-time job or someone else doesn't have, you know, you guys might have kids, uh, or, or whatever it is. You kind of got to accept like, hey, this is the time I have to devote towards towards this. And, um, you know, that, that person just has absolutely more time to devote to cycling. But you can still go out and have fun. And I had a great time in this race. 
man, I always have a good time. Like her racing is fun too. Like I'm talking about the analytical side of things and how to do better, but man, is it fun. It's a good time. Um, I don't know. I love it. I love it. Even, you know, coming in third or fifth or third or third or fifth, <laughs> I still have a great time and it's more fun with, with teammates and, uh, yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's good, man. It's really good. Get out and do it. So five laps to go here. Um, my thought, and Johnny and I had been chatting throughout the race. Uh, he just said, stay on my wheel. He wanted to kind of lead me out. He was going to pick the wheel and I was going to try to come across, you know, on him. I know that Johnny and I like top speed wise are pretty close. I don't think I, I, I know I couldn't come around him. So the idea was just like to hold on to his wheel as best we could and take a one, two, uh, and, and not let anybody dive around him on these last corners. Because what will happen is you see the guy in the blue here, like pushing his way up. If he gets enough of his body in front of me, I have to give him the corner. See how I just did that? Or he just did that. So like I lost Johnny's wheel there essentially. So what I don't want to happen on the last lap is I don't want someone to do that to Johnny because I want Johnny to have his choice of the wheel that he wants on the last lap because that gives him the best opportunity to win the race. And that's what I've done um, here, I, I, I try to do here. And then in the next, I got, well, yesterday I did the same thing. This guy gets upset at me here, I think. Yeah, because I pushed him out. That guy, I touched that big dude with my arm. Oh, I bumped him in a crit race, guys. He got upset. Oh no. Oh geez, 220 pounds, I weigh 160 pounds. He's upset that I touched him on the arm, whatever. Uh, so anyway, that's that's what I'm trying to do here. The guy in the blue, he really wants Johnny's wheel and, and we're battling for it. Um, he was okay with me bumping him a little bit. You guys watch those California crit videos, man. They get aggressive. We're, we're very chill out here. There's not a huge field and yeah, we all know each other pretty well, but um, yeah, obviously these guys here don't watch those California races because that stuff gets aggressive. All right, three to go here, starting to string out. What I'm gonna start doing for Johnny is I'm gonna start kind of faking. I'm gonna fake, I'm gonna take my whole body and I'm gonna rock to the inside of these corners, okay? And I'm gonna come off Johnny's wheel to the, it'll be to the right to protect from guys diving up the inside and, and chopping the corner. So I'll be protecting that for the next three laps here. If you see me weave to the inside, that's what I'm doing. Look at the guy in the blue again here. The mosquito, as he's come to be known on the Bianchi. Um, and, and obviously I didn't 100% I didn't block it there. Two laps to go. But you saw what happened. You see how I kind of got bunched there? I kind of got surrounded. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to Johnny's wheel here. And then the next time I'm gonna block that from happening. And you see me sitting far right here. It's because I don't wanna be coming up the right. So what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing wattage to give Johnny the clean sweep of the corner. All right, that's, that's my job. So if I can let Johnny apex that corner nice and round, let him carry all the speed, he's gonna have a little fresher legs for the sprint. I'll sacrifice my legs, see me diving right here, keeping people on the right. So I'll sacrifice my legs by going in, chopping the corner, right? Hitting the brakes and then using more power to come out of the corner so that Johnny has a clean apex. That's essentially what I, my, my role is here. Trying to just let him sit on the big guy's wheel um, because that's the wheel he wants. Now see me here, look, we're last lap. I'm literally weaving to the right to keep the guys from diving up underneath us here on the right hand side sitting in the wind weaving to the right that's my job right there and then it lets this guy on the outside but i'm on the inside i'm good now we would have been fine there johnny decides he wants to move up i could not make that pass happen right there so i just maintain position now this would have been a great position here uh had i known that this big guy this was the first race of the season dude pushes me into the gutter uh, had I known this big guy had the staying power last year, he didn't, he would just fizzle. Um, so I opt to go to the left here and I get back to Johnny's wheel. I feel pretty good. Like I'm in a good spot here. And then this corner, as we speed up, I just get pushed wide by centrifugal force and I lose Johnny's wheel. And then we go hard and we sprint and I come across in third. 
Now let's go back and break down a little bit of what happened here. So coming to the last corner, I've learned, and, and in the next race, which was a 3-4 race, I, I use this to my advantage. I didn't know this, but in that long sweeper like that, and, and I guess track cycling would be like the indicator of this, right? Like the shortest distance is on the inside of that corner. The big guy, like, was just in the right place at the right time. I don't think he intended to be up the inside here. Right now, I should have went harder and went around him. I didn't. He saw me coming. He then just pushes me a little bit into the curb. I slow down to avoid an accident. He does that on purpose. That actually gave him the best position in the race. He didn't know it at the time because if you look up the road, you're thinking, no way, the right side's gonna be clogged up. Clogged up, right? So I go left, he stays on the inside. Remember, shorter distance and the corner, uh, it stops being a corner sooner for him than for us on the outside. I start laying on the power here. When I lay on the power, we're going so fast. I try to stand up. My bike actually, which was a mistake, I actually unload the bike, start pushing wide. Look how much he hadn't even stood up yet. And he had probably a mile an hour or two on Johnny and then goes, oh man, and stands up and sprints. I mean, literally just that inside corner. And look at how short the finish line is. Was all it took. So really it came down to in this particular weird sprint here out of a corner, you need to be on the inside, period. We were way too far wide. And uh, I'm so happy with how I did. Johnny wanted it uh, more, you know, he was not happy, but um, I'm happy with how I did. Well guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe, like the video, give it a like uh, if you like what I'm doing here, just trying to promote uh, crit racing in the United States. Thanks guys, we'll talk to you next time.